help in the name of the Lord. Glory be to the Father. To thee we come, O Lord our God. Anybody who would like to take a lily, please do. Uh, they'll even come back for you later in the season. Uh, just leave the ribbons and the little plastic containers underneath because they won't last another week until next Sunday. Uh, so please take them. I hate to have to throw them away, but if you can grow them, that'd be wonderful. Uh, but even if they're past, uh, we are still only about halfway through Easter. Uh, yesterday, a bunch of us gathered down in Westfield at St. Joseph's Parish and celebrated uh, the 150th birthday of Bishop Francis Hoder. And we started off with Mass at 11 o'clock, the Bishop Hoder Canon. And I've said many times that we're the only church in the uh, only parish in the entire church that uses this on a consistent basis. And Father Senior Soltyshak used this yesterday. And uh, you know, he's an emotional kind of guy, but he actually, I think, started crying a little bit. Had tears coming down his uh, eyes um, when he was reading the Mass. And I think when you really pay attention to the words from St. John's Gospel, um, you know, if you don't just get used to hearing them, if you listen to them, uh, there's, a, there's a real powerful impact in those words, in those verses that, that Hoder chose for his canon of the Mass. And I just hope that we don't get so used to the Mass that we don't have that same kind of reaction about the spirituality that is in this canon and in this event where Jesus comes onto our altar. Uh, the main speaker yesterday was Father Senior Banash, and uh, as I've mentioned a number of times, he's the last surviving student of Bishop Hoder. He's 86 years old. He's been a priest since 1950. And uh, so he offered his reminiscences, and he always tells me before we start, I have nothing to say, I don't know what to say. He talked for an hour, 15 hours, 20 minutes, when I had to go, that's enough, <laughs> we can't keep going. So the guy has nothing to say, sp uh, spoke for well over an hour, and his passion about this church is just inspiring. Um, you know, he's, he's got his own particular views and everything, but his passion after being a priest since 1950 and having 86 years in this church denomination, uh, it truly is inspiring. And so once I uh, edit that down uh, to a reasonable length, we'll put that up on FCAT and I'll let you know about that as well for those who weren't able to attend yesterday in person. But as we do gather at this time for the celebration of the Mass, I ask you to please make a private examination of your conscience. And may we now recite the confidier together. I confess to Almighty God, one and the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O God, I earnestly repent of all my wrongdoings and am heartily sorry that I have offended you. Most merciful Father, have mercy on me. Forgive me and pardon me my sins. I resolve to amend my life, improve and sanctify it, that I may become worthy to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. 
I beseech you, blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray to the Lord, our God, for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to light everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and the remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and by his authority vested in me, I absolve you from your sins, in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. <laughs> Show us, O Lord, your mercy. Alleluia. And grant us your salvation. Alleluia. O Lord, hear our prayer. And our the Lord be with you. And with Let us pray. Take away from us our iniquities and beseech you, O Lord, that pure hearts may enter into the tabernacle of the Holy of Holies, through Christ our Lord. Amen. You, my sheep, you are the sheep of my pastor, and I am your God, says the Lord God. Alleluia. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, the shepherd of your people, strengthen us through your risen presence. May we walk with you each and every day and follow you in a humble trust, for you are the good shepherd. You call us by name and lead us, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The lesson for this morning's Mass is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. They went from Perga and came to Antioch in Pisidia, and on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. When the meeting of the synagogue broke up, many Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. The next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and blaspheming, they contradicted what was spoken by Paul. Then both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken first to you, since you reject it and judge yourselves to be unworthy of eternal life. We are now turning to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have set you to be a light for the Gentiles, so that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and praised the word of the Lord, and as many as had been destined for eternal life became believers. Thus the word of the Lord spread throughout the region. But the Jews incited the devout women of high standing and the leading men of the city and stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them out of their regions. So they shook the dust off their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy with the Holy Spirit. Here ends the lesson prescribed by the church for this morning's Holy Mass. Thanks be to God. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock, and his arms he gathers the lamb. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. 
When the chief shepherd is revealed, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, and cleansed my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I, said Jesus, are one. By the words of this holy gospel, may our sins be forgiven. Let's take this morning's gospel according to St. John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think a lot of you know that I drive this little lime green Ford Fiesta, and even if you didn't, maybe know that it's a really tiny car. The Fiesta had a recall because of a glitch in its transmission. I've been waiting since December for that part to arrive up in Greenfield because there was such a backlog because there were so many cars that needed that repair. But this past Wednesday, they finally fit me in. And Greenfield Ford was very nice about it. They couldn't do anything about not getting the part. And, well, they set me up with a rental vehicle that day while my car was in their shop. But then there was another complication on top of that. I guess the airbags and a bunch of Hondas and Toyotas have also led to a huge number of recalls for them, too. And this meant that rental agencies have been struggling to keep up with the demand with all of these cars going back and forth to the garage. So the rental agency, they send me home with... You know, I go there, this little tiny green Ford Fiesta, the garage sent to the rental agency, the rental agency sent me home in a gargantuan Ford F-150 pickup truck. <laughs> with, with, on top of that, with Tennessee license plates, no less. So I'm driving around in a southern pickup truck, and if you remember from last Sunday's sermon, I was just making fun of Tennessee because they named the Bible their official state book along with the sniper rifle as their official state rifle. I felt absolutely silly driving that truck playing my classical music, and that was not the preset, by the way, in that truck. So I'm driving down 5 and 10 in that F-150 with my classical music, and I just want to hunker down and hide. I'm this scrawny little priest listening to classical music. I'm driving this big rig, and all I can think is that people, when they see me, they've got to be laughing. I couldn't wait, so what I did 
is I went over to Channing B parking lot, I parked that big F-150 there, and I took Sharon's car and left her the truck. <laughs> luckily, luckily the job was done before she got out of work. But I just felt so silly, and I could not wait to get back into that tiny little Ford Fiesta. But that I felt silly driving that gigantic truck has absolutely nothing to do with someone else loving their truck. And maybe even thinking that driving around in a little green car like mine, now that would be silly for them. What feels comfortable for one person isn't necessarily true for the other. And there is no problem with that. What appeals to you may not appeal to me and vice versa, but in this in no way, no matter whatsoever, needs to imply that one person's choice is better or worse than another person's choice. If I like a little green Ford Fiesta, if you like a big F-150, what difference does that make if each his own choice? Now this may be a trivial example of a little car and a big truck, but it can play out in many more significant ways as well. Preference does not have to be a zero-sum game where if my choice wins, your choice loses. Different preferences can stand side by side. They can even complement each other. And that's how I'd like to approach this morning's gospel selection of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. On this third Sunday after Easter, each and every year, we read one little segment of that long, beautiful story in John chapter 10 of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. Jesus tells us that there is one shepherd and one flock, regardless of differences. Doesn't matter if you go here to church, go there to church, doesn't mean if you believe like this or believe like that, there's only one shepherd, and Jesus says, God the Father and I are one. That one shepherd is God. And all of our differences, they tick us off a lot more than they tick off God. In today's reading, we hear that the good shepherd leads us and gives us eternal life, and that he says, no one, is going to take them out of my hand. The good shepherd is the one who promises eternal life. And he says, he's the one protecting us. No one is gonna take them out of my hands, he says. In other words, it's the will of Jesus that we be saved, even if that had to mean him dying on the cross for us, and then coming back after the resurrection for us, even though we did all those things, horrible things to him, he comes back to us, he does all of those things because no one is gonna take them out of my hands, he says. What more could we dare ask of him? And what more could he do than die and come back for us? Yesterday, one of the teachings of Bishop Poda that I highlighted was this same very thought. In the 1914 Confession of Faith of our church, we say collectively, I believe. So everybody in our church says, I believe in immortality. I believe in everlasting happiness in eternity, in the union of God, of all people, of all races, of all ages, because, not because I'm so good and I deserve it, because we say in the confession of faith, I believe in the divine power, God's power, the good shepherd's power of love, mercy, and justice. And then it continues, and for nothing else do I yearn, but if that may be to me, according to my faith. Our hope in universal salvation is not based principally upon the fact that I deserve to get into heaven, it is based on the very nature of our God and our Savior who chooses to call himself the Good Shepherd of all of us, of all of us. With this in mind, try to imagine the scene presented to us this morning from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul has been sent out by the risen Jesus to preach the gospel all over the Roman Empire. And as was his custom, he first visits the local synagogue to share with them the message of Jesus. No one is excluded. He then branches out to the entire community. After that, doesn't go so well. Whatever city he goes to, he preaches Jesus to any and all who will listen because Jesus says, you go everywhere. No one is excluded from the invitation to believe. And then the selection ends with those words, the disciples were filled with joy in the Holy Spirit. Joy is a part of our faith. You know, I think about so many other things besides church that people wish they could even last longer. You know, Bruce Springsteen concerts go on for hours where people are just so happy they keep on continuing and continuing and continuing. All those things that we do for fun. Tomorrow I'm heading out to the Red Sox. Got to leave here at like 6 something in the morning to be out there for 11 o'clock. So at this time tomorrow I'll already I'll be out by Fenway and I'm hoping for a good long game because I'm going to enjoy it. But in church, what is the thing that you hear a lot of, a lot of people saying? It was a great mass. It was quick. Father didn't have a long sermon. It was quick. We got out of there. We don't enjoy God. 
The first part of the message of the earliest church was that there was joy in believing. But other people, they don't find any joy in God anymore. And that could be a problem of church, of what we've done to God. Their joy is based on the fact in that earliest church that they recognized and were appreciated and welcomed into the arms of the Good Shepherd. Too many religions professed a God that was so holy that he was scary. Such gods were locked into temple fortresses, fortresses to protect the ordinary people from actually coming into contact with God. When the earliest church preached instead of a Jesus as the good shepherd, instead of building this huge fortress-like temple, they said, Jesus is God, God the Father and I are one, and I go out and I welcome everyone, I love everyone, I want everyone to be saved, no one will take them out of my hands. Of a God who sought out contact with the people that he loved, of a God who would, instead of being fearful, would sacrifice himself because of his unconditional love for everybody, those first believers, they were filled with joy that they counted in the eyes of God. Exclusion was not a part of the earliest Christian vocabulary. Remember that Jesus accepted the prostitutes, the tax collectors, the sick, the broken, the poor, the grieving, the mentally ill. Remember that he extended the invitation to follow as well to the rich and to the connected. He invited women and children, all of these people that everybody else was pushing away. Jesus brought them in close. And then the resurrected Jesus ordered his church to do the same everywhere, for all time, to everyone. That is the divine power that we hope in as national Catholics and that we preach. Tomorrow, we celebrate Patriots Day, that fight that began in Lexington and Concord in 1775 over the idea that every single person counts, not just the king. On Friday, we observe Earth Day, and the message that for as varied as we humans are all around this globe, we are tasked with the singular responsibility of being stewards of this same small, irreplaceable little planet that all of us have to share and get along on. Tie this together with a message of the gospel of the Good Shepherd who cares for everybody, and we can see that our sacred duty as church, as a nation, as citizens, as human beings, on this same little blue dot of a planet, is to welcome and not to exclude, to fight and to work for community among all sorts of people and against the rush to divide and separate and push apart because of differences. And then just maybe we will have found again the ingredients that can bring us together as church with faith and with joy. And for this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mighty Lord, as we gather still before your Easter altar this day, we offer our prayers in memory of Mitchell A. Maslanka, who died 22 years ago on 17th of April, 1994, is offered by his family. We offer prayers in memory of Dottie uh, Degman, who passed away just this past Friday, is offered by her friend, uh, Marianna Foster. We offer our prayers at this time in memory of Elizabeth DeBrinzi, who passed away on April 16th of 2013, from Eric, Sue, and Matt DeBrinzi. And we also continue to offer our prayers for those battling cancer, Doug Robinson, by daughter Jenny Whitman and Karen Herzig, Tom Nidal, by Teresa Belial, Meg Connors by Ellen and Don Skrosky, Marie Lovin and Carl Dickinson by Joe and Peg Kuschuk, Randy Clements by her grandmother Dottie Baronis, fathers Ray Drader, Jan Bielczek, and Maurice Lazelle is offered by myself. We also ask the Lord to keep all of our private intentions before your, that we bring before your altar. Um, and we ask you also, Lord, if there are any other intentions from the congregation that they would like to offer. There being none, we ask the Lord to bless each and every one of us here gathered and also those who are traveling this school vacation week. In these things we pray together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. 
Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father to the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but one being in the Father. Through him all things are made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and he became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death in his spirit. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism of forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. I will appoint over you shepherds after my own heart, who will shepherd you wisely and prudently. Hallelujah.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Amen. Amen. Almighty Father, accept this holy oblation of the Mass and grant us a loving, wise, and courageous spirit as we pastor, minister, and teach in your holy name. Through all of our words, all the things that we do, may we seek your glory in the increase of your kingdom here on earth. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. Throughout all ages of ages, Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, especially at this time when he became our paschal sacrifice, he is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. Through his death he conquered death for us, and by his wondrous resurrection he restored eternal life. Therefore the angels and archangels with all the saints in the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. We therefore, most merciful Father, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Most humbly beseech you to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy unspotted sacrifices, which your holy church receives from you, imploring you to defend and guide her throughout the world, together with her priests and all true believers of the holy faith. Remember, O Lord, your servants and your handmaids. all present in this congregation, imbued with faith in your holy care, your rule and fatherly love. Wholeheartedly this day, we unite in spirit with all of those, we give the most blessed Mary, Mother of Jesus Christ, likewise as apostles and with all the innumerable hosts of martyrs and confessors who lived, labored, and suffered for the same holy cause which Jesus Christ sacrificed his life in his most precious blood, just as they believe, professed, and united with you through prayer and this immaculate oblation, which you have instituted from the beginning of the world and in time have fulfilled through Jesus Christ and gave it to humanity as a pledge of eternal salvation. So we too this day profess and unite ourselves with you, most gracious Father, in humbleness of spirit and accept from your hands this holy bread and this precious chalice is a long for gift bestowed on us by the Savior of the world as spiritual food and drink. He promised us this food and drink in that moment when he revealed his divine power by the multiplication of bread, and feeding with it a hungry multitude of people, and afterwards foretold the giving of it to his disciples and friends as a more excellent nourishment when he said, It is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And afterwards, when the temporal and messianic life of the divine teacher and giver of the covenant was drawing to a close, he gathered into the upper room all those he had loved in a singular way and had chosen to continue his work of salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. In the world you will face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ask whatever you wish will be done for you.
Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. For their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me, I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. After these and other words of the archpriestly prayer and with holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you take and eat of this, for this is my body. In like manner, after supper, taking also this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you take and drink of this, for this is the chalice of my blood of the new and eternal testament, the mystery of faith, which for you and for many shall be shed for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you shall do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Wherefore, mindful, Lord, we, your servants, as also your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, is also his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension. We receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of eternal salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance, as from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly beseech you, Almighty God, command that our prayers be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar before the countenance of your divine majesty. That as many of us as receive this altar of the most sacred body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be mindful also, Lord, of your servants and handmaidens, all who have gone before us with a sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity. To these souls, O Lord, as also to those who have died in Christ, grant everlasting life. And to those who during life strayed from the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, Mercifully shorten their sufferings, we beseech you, in the name of Christ our Lord and your beloved Son. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles, martyrs, and all your saints, who shed their blood for your name's sake, whose hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and whose lives patterned after the divine Master merited eternal bliss. Number so, Lord, in their company, with confidence we ask you, not because of our merits, but that you bestow forgiveness through Christ our Lord, by whom, O Lord, these gifts you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and bestow upon us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him, to you, God, the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and all glory. Throughout all ages of ages, Amen. let us pray, admonished by salutary precepts and following divine institution, we may call to say.
present and future. And when you deem it necessary to test us, grant us the same serenity of spirit which you bestowed on the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed apostles, martyrs, and all of those who resolutely march under the banner of our Savior, that being supported by your help, may always be free from sin and secure from all despair. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God. Throughout all ages of ages, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. May the union of your divine spirit with humanity in Jesus Christ be to our sanctification and life everlasting. Amen. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, My peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity according to your will, who lives and reigns, God, world without end. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who according to the will of the Father, through the cooperation of the Holy Spirit, has by your death revived the world. Deliver me by this your most sacred body and blood from all my iniquities and from every evil, and grant that I may always fulfill your holy will, who lives and reigns for all ages. Amen. Partaking of your body, O Lord Jesus Christ, which I, all unworthy, dare to receive, may not serve as a judgment, but through your mercy may become a defense of my soul and body and a desired remedy. May the sacramental union with you, Jesus Christ, my Master and Savior, awaken in me living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. May make me a willing and zealous servant toward fulfilling God's purpose on earth, and may it at last unite me entirely with you, O Christ and God, in eternity. Grant this who lives reigns God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces that he has rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and the blood of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
peace and blessings may God provide some tricks and my community in the world. Body and the blood of Christ. 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 These are the blessings that God the Father has given us in the time of the Body and the blood of Christ. Body and the blood of Christ. The blessings for God, the Father, the Son, the Son, the Son, the Son, the Body and the Blood of Christ. 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 The Body and the Blood of Christ. Body and the Blood of Christ. The Body and the Blood of Christ. Body and the blood of Christ. The 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 body.
and your blood which I have drunk cling to my innermost being and grant that no sin remain in me whose holy sacraments have nourished who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let me live to praise you. May your edicts give me help. I have wandered like a lost sheep. Seek out your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And your Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you so shepherd your people that they shall not want. Lead us peacefully to your green pastures and refresh us beside your still water. For those of us who have shared in this holy banquet of the Mass, restore our souls when we do go astray and always lead us in your path of righteousness for your name's sake. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. <coughs> The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Oh, the sacrifices offered. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, O Holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered up in the sight of your majesty be acceptable unto you, and through your mercy be effective to myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. The beginning of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, without Him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was light, and the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone who is coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or the will of flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory is of the Father's only Son, full of grace and of truth. Thanks, thanks be to God.